there's a sutta where the Buddha talks about this. He talks about mixed giving. And this is in the Anguttara Nikaya sixes. And he, he talks about how there's many different combinations of giving. Because this is something that people often ask. They're like, oh, but you know, I should only give if it's completely pure, if my intentions are completely pure and, and there's, there's no, nothing mixed in at all. And of course, if we wait for our mind to become completely pure <laughs> before we do any good actions, it's going to take some time. So it's usually mixed, right? It's usually mixed. A lot of our goodness is a little bit mixed with some impurities. But we work with, we work with the goodness and we find that the impurities lessen over time. And so in this sort of the Buddha says things like, you know, sometimes people give because they're encouraged to do this by their parents and that it's a family tradition. So you give for that reason. Or you give expecting a reward in heaven. Or you give expecting some sort of result. Or you give, and I think this is part of the sutta, you give wanting to reflect upon it later, like we did just then. You think, oh, I'll do this, and then I'll return to this, and I'll get joy in my mind. But he says the best kind of giving, the one that is least mixed, is simply to give because it is an ornament for the mind and a requisite for the mind. So giving, simply giving, is beautiful. It decorates our mind, right? It's like a nice necklace for our mind. And it's a requisite for the mind. Requisite means something that's essential. It's essential. And in this way, the Buddha is talking about what's in essential for enlightenment. And so practicing generosity is something that will help us develop on the spiritual path. So even if we practice and it's a little bit mixed, then it's okay. And we know that for a lot of, a lot of people, they, they act in order to have their name associated. And so it is a source of pride for them. So there is that danger. And so I guess hopefully if they just give and keep on practicing giving, then they'll start to see some benefit. But if, if this is happening to you, then um, you need to reflect upon uh, the nature of self a bit more clearly and that we, we practice in this way to reduce our sense of me, mine and I and that we're letting go, that practicing letting go of things like physical possessions or money, this letting go is practice for the big letting go, which is letting go of this body, this me, this identity. And that's what we're doing. We practice letting go. So, yeah. So I think there's two things involved in the pride. One is a sense of cultural shame around being associating with your good qualities and celebrating them. So there might be some cultural shame there. And the other is this extreme of, you know, ego giving. But again, even if an ego is involved in giving, it's still better than not giving. And the Buddha talked about the kind of people who, who don't give. And he said that they were like a stagnant 
pool in the forest that's haunted by ghosts. No one wants to go there. No one wants to be around them. But when he talked about people who give, he said that people want to be with kind, generous people. And, you know, this is something also at play when people want to be known for their generosity. You know, they, they, they want people to come and, and to enjoy the things that they're giving as well. So I think that, you know, there'll always be mixed giving, but watch out for the danger of the ego and watch out for that sense of cultural shame that won't allow you to enjoy your good qualities.